Today I'm going to be talking about and breaking down Warmlight's Vapor Barrier Clothing. Warmlight's founder Jack Stevenson first started using and figured out how to work with Vapor Barrier back in the 1950s and they originally started working with plastic. But today we have a really nice, really durable, long-lasting fabric that's comfortable to wear that you don't have to use plastic anymore. Vapor Barrier is tried and true and will help you explore the great outdoors with a lot more safety. So. Vapor barrier clothing. When you're hiking, climbing, running, or doing any sort of outdoor physical activity, especially for extended period of times, you are gonna need to dress in the proper layers depending on what your climate is. It will depend on what kind of layers you need. And even if you are outdoors on a warm day and a comfortable day, we know the weather can change really fast and quickly, and you may need to quickly change into a more appropriate layer depending on what the weather does. So we'll just start with the absolute basics of vapor barrier and why it's important. So we'll start off with sweating is really important. Uh, it's how your body controls your temperature and keeps you warm or cool depending on what kind of conditions you're dealing with. And when either the air is too hot to allow for the movement of uh, air across your body or when your physical exertion is more than what the surrounding air moving across your body can cool, you will begin to sweat. When you sweat, it isn't just pure water, it's also a mixture of water and oil and minerals and such. So it's also really important to be replacing those, that water and mineral and oils between levels of activity. So make sure you drink water and continue to eat properly between activities. But that's kind of a side note. Anyway, now that we're done with the basics of sweating, Water is fantastic at cooling your body, and that's exactly why our body does it. But depending on what you wear, it can have a profound impact on the efficacy of your sweating. Bet you never thought of that. <laughs> and where exactly that evaporated water goes once it leaves the surface of your skin. If you are wearing wicking, porous, moisture absorbing, or breathable materials, Side note, make sure you know exactly what all of your layers of clothing are made out of and what they're doing because these terms are not all the same and they're not inter interchangeable. They do have very specific meanings and they do mean very different things. So make sure you know that before you just slap clothes on. And side note, these will in various ways move the sweat away from your body. That damp air that you just created, as it moves away from your body, it is going to be lower than the surrounding air temperature. And then it's just gonna turn from a vapor back into a liquid. And then all that happened was that damp, moist air got trapped inside your upper layers, like your sweater or your jacket, which can make it very damp or even to a soaking point. And that is where the danger sets in because that mildly damp or even soaking wet jacket or sweater, you might not even notice it for a while. You just notice that you're getting really cold or your jacket's really heavy or it's damp to the touch. And this can lead to hypothermia, heat exhaustion, or even heat stroke. And yes, you can have heat problems even in extreme cold. All this comes down to the material and what exactly the material is doing to your body and the sweat that it is creating. It's a whole scientific process, but not all of these things are the same, and it's really important to understand what fabrics you're using and what they're gonna do. So, all this to say, what in the heck does Vapor Barrier do, and how can it save you from all of this crazy host of problems? Well, Vapor Barrier is exactly what it sounds like. It's a vapor barrier. It traps the sweat. Now, I know that might sound really kind of gross, and you're like, ew, why would I want to trap the sweat? But, as we just said, it's just gonna move away from your body and into your upper layers of clothes. If it's really cold, or even in extreme heat, sometimes that can still be extremely dangerous. Vapor barrier technology is exactly what it sounds like. It creates a barrier that stops over 90% of all water vapor from moving past that fabric layer. And it helps prevent it from becoming caught in your upper layers of clothing. It does take some getting used to, and when people first start wearing it, they often start attributing like what seems like excessive amounts of sweating to the vapor barrier clothing. But that's just vapor barrier clothing doing its job, exactly what it was designed to do. It's trapping that sweat and keeping it from getting caught up into your upper layers. So it does take a little bit of adjusting to get used to. You will have to adjust and adapt the way that you put on layers because if you're used to wearing breathable or wicking or some sort of porous material and you're used to it just evaporating and going nowhere, nowhere, you know where it's going, into your upper layers, you're now seeing it all condensed onto your body and feeling sticky and gross. But if you take off insulating layers, you will 
create a warmer environment that's not too warm and creating too much excess sweat. This period of adjustment, it can take as simple as one hike or maybe several hikes, but one of the great things about Vapor Barrier on top of all of that, just the fact that it stops the water from soaking your upper layers and creating huge problems, is first of all, it can create a temperature difference of 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit just at your skin as a layer in and of itself. So Vapor Barrier does keep you warm just at, by itself. Keeps the water out from your surrounding um, clothing and because it's keeping the sweat close to your skin it helps prevent your skin from drying out and this can help keep it moisturized which bonus helps prevent against frostbite another helpful thing no one wants frostbite when first using vapor barrier it will take some time or i guess it may take some time to get adjusted to how many layers to wear so bring a lot of extra layers of various thicknesses and weights because you're gonna be taking layers on and off on that first hike or two to figure out exactly which sweaters or coats or other pieces that you need to really give you that perfect balance of temperature where you're sweating just the right amount but not too much so that you don't feel sticky and gross and creating this perfect homeostasis beside your skin using that vapor barrier uh, clothing allowing you to explore longer and safer. So there you go. That's how Vapor Barrier clothing works. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested and you need some Vapor Barrier clothing because now you're sold on it, here at Warm Light we sell Vapor Barrier gloves, mittens, pants, shirts, socks, all of the above. Plus, we also put it in our sleeping bags. So stick around, that'll be a new video. How does Vapor Barrier work in our sleeping bags and why is it important? If you need to learn even more about Vapor Barrier, there's even more with a lot more scientific explanation on our website at warmlight.com forward slash vapor barrier. Our founder Jack Stevenson figured all of this out back in the 1950s and we've just been following forward with that information ever since. So if you want to hear it from a real scientist, <laughs> that's the place to find it. That's where I got all the information from this video is from Jack Stevenson. So there you go. Stay safe out there and keep on exploring using warm light gear. Bye. See you in the next one.